Stripey to the Rescue, written by Ivy L. Wallace. the wall in Timothy's bedroom is a shelf, painted a nice shiny blue to match his bedroom furniture. And on this shelf live his animals. Timothy has other animals, of course, who live in boxes and cupboards and odd corners, but the five little shelf animals are his special ones. This is Gumper, who was the very first animal on the shelf. He's a trifle worn in parts, and his buttons come off easily because he has such a huge tummy. He's a very good-natured bear, and will do anyone a good turn. Gumper likes to snooze in the sun amongst nice-smelling flowers. Best of all, he likes doing nothing. And this is Woeful, who looks very sad, but he's quite happy. He sneezes a lot, though. Now, unfortunately, Gumper and Woeful do not get on, and quarrel dreadfully sometimes. You see, Gumper will look superior when Woeful loses his handkerchief just before a sneeze, or Woeful will murmur things like, really, some animals, and no manners at all, when Gumper overeats and has hiccups, which is rather often. And this is Little Mutt. He's usually called Silly Little Mutt. He always seems to do the wrong thing. But he's a dear little mutt, soft and cuddly and friendly, and Timothy likes to carry him around in his pocket. Little mutt often sleeps under Timothy's pillow too, because he is such a comfort. These two queer little animals are Get Up, a flannel and stuffing giraffe, and Stripey, a woolen zebra, and they are best friends. They have both seen better days and their coats are a wee bit grubby. Stuffing comes out of Getup's hooves, and he is always falling down. That's why he's called Getup. Timothy thinks the world of Stripey and Getup, and they think the world of him. One morning, Timothy sneezed. Over and over again he sneezed, and his mother put him to bed and sent for the doctor. Then she blamed Stripey and Getup. She called them unhygienic animals, and said they encouraged germs and she said she would give them away. Get up and Stripey couldn't believe their ears. She was such a kind, sensible person, usually. She doesn't mean it, Stripey, comforted Get up, swishing his tail nervously. She knows Timothy would be lost without us. Grown-ups will do anything once they think of it, Get up, answered Stripey, his little zebra heart heavy with unhappiness. She won't tell Timothy till we've gone. Then it'll be too late. Timothy's mother found a large box and packed Getup and Stripey into it with a whole heap of Timothy's grown out of clothes and sent them to a jumble sale. Wedged among the woolies inside the dark stuffy box, the two frightened little things held hooves for company and time passed. Once they felt the box being lifted high up and dropped with a bump and then they were jolted all over the place. They were on the carrier's cart. I'm dreadfully worried about Timothy, whispered Stripey at last. He's had colds before, but he looked different, this cold. He needs us, so we better get back to him, Stripey, decided Get Up. Yes, because he doesn't know where we are, so he can't come and find us, said Stripey. But we know where he is. He's just where we left him, so we'll go back to him. We'll gnaw a hole in this box and escape and go back to him, agreed Get Up. So they set to work and gnawed. They soon made a hole big enough to wriggle through and jumped off the carrier's cart down into the dusty lane. Then they picked themselves up, shook themselves, and started off at a brisk trot back the way they had come. Soon the stony lane hurt their soft woolly hooves, so Get Up asked, Should we take a short cut through Bluebell Wood if there is one, Stripey? There almost always is one, Get Up, replied Stripey. And there was. So they wriggled through a prickly hedge and took it. Suddenly, Get Up said, Look, Stripey. There, right in their path, lay a little red slipper. 
Some animal must have lost it, decided Get Up. It's very faded. Perhaps it has lain here all the winter. I shall take care of it in case one of us gets a thorn in a hoof. Or we might meet the animal who lost it, said Stripey. And on they trotted until they came to a field of juicy carrots and had a satisfying nibble. Later in the evening, they heard a rumbling, creaking, jolting sort of noise, and down in the lane came a circus. They hid in some long grass and watched the lighted caravans and gypsies and dogs go by. Then, oh, dreadful moment, Get Up sneezed and a gypsy grabbed him. Stripey watched with agonized eyes as Get Up was pushed into a sack and flung into a caravan. Stripey watched the circus trundle away into the night, and then he sat down and sobbed. But after a few minutes, he said to himself firmly, Pull yourself together, Stripey. All depends on you now. Be a brave zebra and go to the rescue. So he stiffened his mane, held his tail high, and galloped off after the circus. Hours later, the circus camped for the night, and on a nearby hill, weary little Stripey camped too. He poured with his little flannel hoof until he hollowed a little warm nest in the grass. Then he settled down, but not to sleep. All through the long, dark, cold night, Stripey kept watch. That was the first night of many that the little zebra kept watch, always waiting for a chance to go to Get Up's rescue. Each day, when the circus travelled, so did Stripey, trotting wearily but gallantly a little way behind. And each night, when the circus camped under the moon, so did tired little Stripey, just a little way off, watching and listening. But the dogs were his great worry. They barked fiercely whenever he went too near the circus. Far away at home, Timothy's cold had become serious, until the day came when the doctor called four times. Only three sad little animals kept watch on the shelf, and Timothy kept asking and asking for Stripey and Get Up. The doctor said gravely, They must be found. Of course, Timothy's mother did everything she could to find them. The box of grown out of clothes had arrived at the jumble sale with a hole in it, but no animals. She advertised in all the papers, Lost, a zebra and a giraffe, woolen, child's pet, reward. But there was no reply. And far, far away, on a lonely hillside, patient little Stripey still watched and waited in vain until at long last there came a night when he crept nearer and nearer to the circus, and not a single dog barked. Slipping unseen over the grass like a little striped shadow, he reached the animals' tents. Stripey trotted round the tents, his hooves making a very faint clip-clop, clip-clop, and from time to time he gave a very soft neigh. Once he thought he heard Get-Up answer, but a lion roared in a tent nearby and drowned all other sounds. Suddenly something tugged at his hoof. It was a tiny mouse, holding in its front paws the little red slipper Getup had found in the wood. It's a message from Getup to show me where he is, guessed Stripey. He followed the little mouse under the canvas into a dimly lit tent, and there, a prisoner in a cage, was Getup. There wasn't a moment to lose. Dawn was breaking, and from the caravans came sounds of gypsy voices. Courage, get up, whispered Stripey, lifting a bunch of keys down from a hook with his teeth. In a second, he had unlocked the cage and get up was free. Stripey freed two other little captives, a white rabbit with wings called Pookie and a real monkey called Tunky. Out of the cages, across the tent, under the canvas and into the dawn, without a backward glance, fled the five little animals, Stripey and get up, Pookie and Tunky and the tiny little mouse whose name was Kinker because he had a kink in his tail. Not until they were a long way from the circus did they dare to stop running. Then they thanked Stripey for rescuing them until he blushed all over his white stripes with pride. And then they all said farewell under the ferns. Tunky and little Kinker went back to... Well, that's another story. And Pookie, the little white fluffy rabbit with wings, went home to... But that's another story too. But what do you think? It was Pookie who had lost his little red slipper in the wood the winter before, when he trudged through the snow, his bundle on his shoulder, in search of his fortune. And that too is yet another story. But before they parted, Pookie gave Getup and Stripey a little red slipper each as a keepsake, which they tucked away out of sight. 
and they all three vowed a lifelong friendship. Very soon, Stripey and Getup were galloping home towards Timothy. We must hurry, Getup. Stripey looked anxious. I know Timothy is very poorly. I can feel it here. And he beat his little flannel breast with his hoof. Rain was falling heavily, and it was the middle of the night, several nights later, when Stripey and Getup, drenched and weary, trotted up the garden path on tattered hoofs. A light showed from Timothy's bedroom window. I knew it, said Stripey. I knew it too, said Getup. Holding on with their strong little teeth, they climbed up the creeper on the wall and scrambled onto the window sill. They tapped softly on the window, and Timothy's mother opened it. She could hardly believe her eyes. Tenderly, she lifted the exhausted, faithful little animals inside. Timothy's mother wrapped them snugly in warm shawls and sat them on Timothy's bed. She looked so unhappy, they forgave her everything. The doctor, he was there too, even in the middle of the night, watched Timothy's face when he saw his special animals were back safe and sound, and sighed with relief. He'll soon get better now, he said, and Timothy started to get better straight away. In the morning, Timothy was nearly himself again. Then Timothy's mother lifted Stripey and Getup very carefully back onto the shelf. The other animals crowded round to hear all their adventures, and it took quite a time to tell the whole story of the rescue. Woeful said he didn't quite believe all they said about meeting a real monkey and certain other things, but when he saw the little red slippers, he admitted it was all very wonderful. Gumper said they were heroes, and Little Mutt was speechless with wonder. Woeful said some animals have all the luck. But Stripey and Getup looked at the two little red slippers and thought and thought. Getup thought of his cage with its strong iron bars and wire netting and big iron lock on the door, and Stripey thought of his lonely cold hilltops and fierce dogs barking in the long dark nights. And Stripey and Getup both thought, Adventures are all very well, but the best thing of all is to be one of Timothy's special animals and live on the animal shelf. <laughs>